Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. Today we're going to talk about sublimation mug blanks because I don't want you to think that you just need to sublimate plain white sublimation mugs. There are so many sublimation blanks on the market and so many different types, colors, ones that have spoons in the handle. There are so many different varieties of sublimation mugs. I just wanted to show you a few of these today to kind of inspire you to think outside of the box when you're thinking about sublimating mugs for yourself, family and friends, or even to sell. So first let's take a look at the mugs themselves that we're gonna use for this video. Let's take a look at just some of the variety of mugs that you can get for sublimation. So first of all, you can get ceramic, glass, or metal in a variety of shapes, different colors, different finishes, just a wide variety. These are just a few of those. So this one already has a color on it and it is glittery. So it's very glittery if you can see that on camera and you can sublimate it right on top of that. This is a ceramic mug. This one is a glass mug and you can see that it has like an ombre effect. So it is sort of purple at the bottom and it goes up to white at the top. Now I will say that I do not use my Cricut mug press for any glass blanks because I have seen people that have broken their mug press doing that. So for glass mugs, I use something like my sublimation oven or a tumbler press that will take mugs. This version is a metal camping mug. They make metal coffee mugs variety of ways for sublimation, including this camping mug variety that has a lip. There are also varieties that have like a top that go in them for like a travel coffee mug. This version, it's black. How are you gonna sublimate it? Well, it's color changing. When you put hot liquid on the inside, this will turn to white and then you can see whatever you sublimate on it. This is a very cool effect for a sublimation mug and makes a great gift. Then there are a variety of mugs that have like a colored inside and a colored handle and then you sublimate on the white part. There are plain ones like this version as well as this version, which I think is very cute that comes with a spoon that fits inside of the handle. So there are a wide variety of these versions, wide variety of colors that you can get them in, wide variety of sizes, but take a look at these ones with the colored handle and colored inside. You might find some unique options for your sublimation mugs. When it comes to making the mug, you are going to need a few dimensions. The first dimension is from the top to where you're gonna sublimate on the bottom. Now for some mugs, like this one for instance, it's straight all the way to the bottom. So I make my sublimation print three and three quarters inch wide when I'm printing. For this version, this bottom is tapered and you're just not gonna get a very good sublimation print on this bottom. So I tend to stop it above where that taper starts. So I might do a four inch wide sublimation print on this version. Then the next thing you're gonna to wanna to measure is the circumference. Now, if you are using a mug press or tumbler press, then you will need to be probably at least half an inch from the handle on both sides. That means in this case, I would probably do two inches worth of gap. That way that would give me room for my handle as well as at least half an inch on the side. So I would probably leave two inches where there would be no sublimation print if I was using a mug or tumbler press. That means I would go ahead and measure and I love this tape measure from PYD Life. It makes measuring this very, very simple. So you just wanna make sure that the tape measure's on there all the way. And then you can see that this is about 10 and a quarter. So 10 and a quarter all the way around, but remember I'm gonna take two inches off to leave room around the handle to use a mug press. So I would go two inches away from that and do about eight and a quarter. And in this case, I would do about, like I said, probably four inches. So four by eight and a quarter would be the dimensions I would use. So let's take a look in Canva at sizing the prints. I'm using Canva to resize my design and I'm gonna click create a design, custom size, and choose eight and a half by 11 inches, which is the size of my sublimation paper. Then I'm gonna click upload, upload files, and find the file on my computer. Once I have this file, I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. And the first thing I wanna do is make it that eight and a quarter. So what we can do is click position, and in the advanced area, make sure the ratio is locked, and make the height 8.25. 
Now we have the correct height. We need to make it four inches wide. What we can do is pull in from the side and I'm gonna pull in, make sure I'm pulling in from both sides and here it is right at four inches. Unlock that ratio and make it exactly 8.25 by four. So now this is exactly the size I need to print on my sublimation printer. And I actually like to name these the size when I'm doing several mugs like this. And then I'm gonna download it as a PDF that I'm gonna print it on my sublimation printer. When printing on my sublimation printer, I am going to make sure that I go ahead and flip it horizontally or mirror the design. Then I'm gonna click print. The supplies you're gonna to use to sublimate your sublimation mug. So first you need the sublimation mug, so it needs to have a sublimation coating. Then you need your sublimation print that we just designed and printed. And that's sublimation ink printed on sublimation paper on a sublimation printer. You also probably need some protective paper if you're gonna use a tumbler or mug press. I will show you an alternative that uses shrink wrap and a heat gun if you're using a sublimation oven. Weeding hook, scissors, lint roller, heat resistant mat, heat resistant tape, and heat resistant gloves. Then you will need some type of heat source. I am gonna use my mug press in this instance. You can use a mug press, a tumbler press that will work for mugs, or a sublimation oven. Any type of heat source will work for this. That will work for the mug itself. The first thing I do is trim my sublimation print. And I'm gonna get really close to the print, but leave just a very thin white border. That way I don't have to cut it straight. You could use something like a paper trimmer and get this cut really straight, but I just find it easier to trim around it very quickly with a pair of scissors. Then you'll wanna clean your mug well. I use a lint roller. You could use a, a lint-free cloth and rubbing alcohol. And then we wanna find the top. So this is gonna be the top. And for this mug, because it's curved at the bottom, I like to put it top down and then put my sublimation print where it lines up at the top and getting it straight at the top is what I'm after. And then we are going to just tape it into place and I like to tape it on one side and then hold it very tight, pressing it to the mug, making sure it's straight and then taping on that opposite side. Do you tape the top and the bottom? That is gonna depend, I believe, on the size of your mug. This mug is a very tight fit inside of the Cricut Mug Press, so I would probably go ahead and tape at least the bottom. That way I don't hang the sublimation print on the sides of the press and mess up the print itself. I just think it's worth it to go ahead and tape this so I don't hit this print as I'm putting it in and like crinkle it up which would ruin the sublimation mug. And I have done that before. So I just like to tape down the bottom just to make sure that's not gonna happen. I probably won't tape all the way around the top. However, you can. I do make sure that just where those ends are is taped all the way down and around the inside. That way both ends are taped down. Now you will notice that of course this one is going in my mug press so I have a gap on both sides and I tried to make it as even as possible. I would do that when you're using a mug or tumbler press. If you're using a sublimation oven, you can actually go up to the handle and even under the handle with the sublimation print. So when you're measuring, you can measure it differently and I actually have templates on another video and I will link to that in the description below this one. At this point, if you were going to use a mug or tumbler press, I would put some type of protective paper around it. This is butcher paper and it's from a company called Precut Paper and it's already cut to the size of mugs. I like keeping this on hand, it just makes the process a bit quicker, but you can use any protective paper that you have. Now this one is ready for a mug or tumbler press. If you're gonna use a sublimation oven, you will need to add shrink wrap around the sublimation print. No need to add butcher paper. So how I add shrink wrap is I cut a slit for the handle, work the handle down inside, tape around the handle so that that shrink wrap does not pull or tear anymore around that handle. Then use a heat gun to shrink the shrink wrap all the way around the mug. Then that mug is ready for your sublimation oven. 
So now my mug press has been heated up and I'm just going to work this mug inside of here. And I'm just gonna make sure it's centered in the opening. Whatever press you're using, make sure the handle is centered in the opening. Close your press. And then the Cricut mug press counts down for you. If you are using a traditional tumbler or mug press, you might have to set the time and the temperature, and that is going to depend on the mugs that you are using. So be sure to check on the listing for the mug that you're using for the time and temperature recommended for a mug or tumbler press or a sublimation oven. Once the mug press is done and it beeps, you can lift it up. Now the handles on these mugs don't get hot, ceramic ones don't. If you have metal or glass, do use heat resistant gloves, or if you're using a oven, use heat resistant gloves as well. Then we're gonna set it on a heat resistant mat. I like to peel this back immediately. So that's that protective paper. And then if this is super hot, you can use heat resistant gloves. You can also lift things with something like the weeding hook to lift them up. And then a lot of times if you get this tape across the bottom started, it will just keep lifting up. Then we can peel that tape from the sides and start lifting up that sublimation print. You can see those cute donuts. I'm just gonna remove that entire print. You can see just how cute this looks. So now let's look at some results on different mugs. So here is the pink mug without any sublimation. And this is that same donut print on the pink mug. So you can see that the colors show through. So sublimation ink is translucent. So any base color like this will show through and alter the colors of your print. As a comparison, here's one with a black handle. I told you these colored handles come in a wide variety of blanks. So here's one with that black handle, but this portion is white and you can really see the differences in the colors between these. So always be aware of that when you try blanks that are a different color than white. That same thing is true for this glass mug, which I did in the oven. Now you'll also notice on this glass mug, maybe your sublimation print looks more faded. That's because that glass is clear frosted. So if I was to put something white inside of here, it would start to pop off a little bit more. So when you have something that's the clear frosted, be sure to expect like a more muted appearance than you would on a white blank. Then here are just two more mugs. This one is a metal camping mug. So these are hard to get to me with the lip. They're hard to get a consistent result. I find the best results in a sublimation oven, but it is possible in a tumbler or mug press, just depending on the one you have. And then this is the one with the colored handle, colored inside, but has the holes for the spoon in the handle. And again, this sublimated really well and it is white so those colors really pop off of both of these. Now here's that black color changing mug and this one I heated it up slightly. I actually heated it up just with the mug press just a little bit. However, you can, this the same effect will happen when you put hot liquids inside. And you can see that it goes from black to where you can actually see that sublimation print. When you sublimate, this will turn completely white and as it cools, it will go back to the black. But every time you put hot coffee inside, you will be able to see your sublimation print. Now this one is still black here because I put it in my mug press to change the color, but this entire thing will turn white. Now something I have been cautioned on is if you leave these like in the sunlight or something where it gets hot all the time, it will permanently change to white. So be sure to store them in a cabinet when they're not in use. And then finally, the one we just sublimated on this video. So this is a Cricut mug with a colored handle and colored inside. And you can see that with this one, it had that tapered bottom. So I was not able to go all the way to the bottom with the sublimation print. So be sure to look and see if yours has a straight side all the way to the bottom or if it's slightly tapered at the bottom when you purchase. So now you have a better idea of different sublimation mugs that you can make. From ones with a colored handle, there are a huge wide variety of those. I swear, I think I can find every color of handle imaginable. To metal mugs, so think camping mugs, think travel mugs with a lid, that type of thing when you're thinking metal sublimation mugs. Color changing, which is one of my favorites, and this one has went back to black. This one is the one I sublimated. It's went back to black since I've been filming this. And then the glitter ones are one of my personal favorites. It does alter the color of the sublimation print, so you might wanna think about what print you wanna put on this. 
However, the glitter shows right through that sublimation print and makes a really cute mug. Glass mugs are another option. Again, use caution if you use the Cricut Mug Press, but otherwise make some glass sublimation mugs. Very cute designs on those as well. And then wide variety of different types. Spoons in the handle, I've seen heart handles. I've seen tons of different variety of mugs. So all you have to do is kind of start sublimation mugs, pick your flavors and give them a try. Now, the donut print that I used for all of these mugs, I used the same print for all of them so you could compare and contrast with the same print. And I do have it available in the description below this video. So head there if you wanna get that for free. And I'm gonna list all the mugs that I used personally so you can pick those up. But again, I encourage you, shop around, think outside of the box, pick up a variety of mugs, and give them a try. Now, if you have a question about anything we've covered, drop it down in the comment section, ask away. If you liked this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week, and trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. So thank you guys so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.